Hello again. Only 50 years ago, the idea that intelligence was largely inherited was quite respectable, and even believing that different human populations had different average levels of intelligence was really controversial. These days, of course, it is controversial to suggest such a thing. What happened to change things and cause people to steer clear of the idea of inherited intelligence? The idea that human intelligence is largely inherited was, from the very beginning, tangled up with the belief that black people were more likely to be of very low intelligence and unlikely to be of high intelligence compared to white people. If intelligence was just another inherited characteristic, like skin colour or height, then the conclusion was inescapable. If two people with low IQs had a child, then their child, their child would probably have a low IQ as well. The chances that such a child would, even with the best upbringing and education, turn out to be a genius were very, very low. Since the IQs of black people, when measured, tended to be a good deal lower than the average white person, about 15 points, it followed inexorably that their children would be dull-witted, and all the schooling in the world wasn't going to change that. The idea had a strong bearing on any discussion about race and education up to the 1970s, by which time it was beginning to be described as racist in the pejorative sense that it indicated prejudice and unfavourable treatment of black people. A man called Cyril Burt, who was an educational psychologist with the London County Council in the 1920s, is, was largely responsible for the idea that intelligence was overwhelmingly inherited rather than a product of education and environment. He was Professor and Chair of Psychology at University College London, and it was Cyril Burt who had such a great influence on the 1944 Education Act, uh, the formation of the 11 plus and so on. He believed that if you could test a child's IQ at 11, it would tell you how intelligent he was and how much he'd be able to have, take advantage of education. A lot of his former students went off uh, into professional life, with no doubt at all that Professor Burt had demonstrated that at least 85% of a person's intelligence was inherited from his or her parents. The whole British school system from the late 1940s onwards was predicated on this assumption. The relevance of this to race and intelligence will be immediately apparent. The twin pillars of Cyril Burke's work were firstly that it was possible accurately to measure intelligence, and secondly that this intelligence was almost entirely handed down genetically. Since, as I say, the testing of black people's intelligence invariably indicated they were on average 15 points lower than white people, this simply meant that their children would be similarly poorly endowed intellectually. Civil Burt's influence uh, extended quite a long way because some of his students were men like Hans Eysenck and Arthur Jensen, of whom some uh, viewers might have heard. Eysenck uh, wrote a couple of books, and so did Arthur Jensen, in which they advanced the idea that educating people could not really increase their intelligence, that some people with low IQs couldn't benefit from much education. Arthur Jensen, in 1969, uh, was a psychologist, former student of um, Cecil Burt, and he wrote an article then in that year called How Much Can We Boost IQ and Scholastic Achievement? And he concluded that hardly anything could be done and he also produced evidence for the 15-point gap in measured IQ between black and white pupils and attributed it largely to heredity under the influence, it has to be said, of um, Cyril Burt's research. The chief plank of um, Cyril Burt's re research was studies in twins that he carried out 
He published extensively on what he claimed was definitive proof that the greater part of our intelligence is handed down to us by our parents. And he did this through studying identical twins, who are the product of a single egg, which is split into two fetuses, known technically as a monozygotic, or MZ, pair of twins. The babies resulting from this process have identical genes. Sometimes those twins are separated at birth and raised differently. For example, in different environments, different uh, homes of, where the parents have different levels of education. And this can tell us, or so Cecil Burke claims, something very useful about intelligence. If the intelligence of those separated twins was found to be very similar in later years, that would suggest that heredity was the main factor in intelligence. If their IQs differed greatly, though, then environmental conditions would be more likely to be implicated. The thing is that instances like that of MZ twins separated at birth are extremely rare. Well, they'd always been rare for most researchers other than civil birds. He came across what seemed to be an inexhaustible supply of monozygotic twins, identical twins. And by studying those separated at birth, he said that the correlation between those pairs was 0 0.86. In other words, about 86% of their intelligence had been inherited and that the environment had little effect. And that really gave a boost to those that believed that IQ could be measured and also that it couldn't be increased by education. When Cyril Burke died in 1971, his ideas were really ruling the roost in psychology and by implication in the study of races, races, anthropologists followed his work keenly because it seemed to show that you could measure the intelligence of different human populations and that having done so, you could predict that the children of somebody with a low IQ was likely to have a child who would have a low IQ as well. In 1976, the Sunday Times published a detailed study of Bert's work relating to identical twins. He'd um, published all his stuff and said he had two collaborators, two women called Margaret Howard and Jay Conway. And these were the women who had apparently tested the children, the twins that he'd uncovered, and arranged all the resultant data. The only problem was they didn't exist. Uh, Bert's official biographer was somebody called Leslie Hernshaw. He was given free access to all Bert's diaries, correspondence and research notes, but he couldn't find any evidence whatsoever from Margaret Howard and Jay Conway. It turned out the whole thing was a scam. The greatest psychologist in Britain of the 20th century had simply invented his data. He had, his, he had the idea that intelligence could be measured and was largely inherited, and so he simply faked all the research data. And upon that, the whole British educational system between the 40s and the 70s was founded. It's hard to overstate what a devastating blow the discovery of this fraud was to the world of psychology. No other work on identical twins was anywhere near as extensive as this. And nobody had managed to carry out as much research on home backgrounds or alleged home backgrounds. None of this means that the idea of inherited intelligence and the ability to measure intelligence is mistaken. It simply means that it became less popular. It had the effect of casting into doubt a lot of these ideas. And you could really say that psychology and anthropology haven't really recovered from the after effects of uh, the discovery of Cecil Burt's terrible scam that he perpetrated in this way. However, 
revealing that one man told a lot of lies and fiddled his data doesn't mean to say that the ideas he was founding were false. It simply means that people moved away, people tended to drop the idea of intelligence as inherited, and they tended to be a little shy of IQ tests. And we haven't yet recovered from that shock, even though 50 years since the revelation was made. So these days we tend to assume that education can change intelligence. We, a lot of us assume that intelligence can't be measured accurately and we view IQ tests with some suspicion. It's a scandal that's cast a long shadow, but it doesn't tell us anything at all really about the possibility that most intelligence is inherited, nor does it tell us really that it's not possible to measure intelligence.